Hello, I'm Peter Bogdanovich. Welcome to New Ray Pictures Cinema in Focus. Join me as we journey into the origins and evolution of moving pictures. The thrill of moving images excited the inventors and their audiences so much that no one said, but these wonders are mute. As a result, the kingdom of shadows was more mysterious, fable-like, and not of this earth. Mark Cousins from The Story of Film The coming of sound seemed like a novelty, something that would fade away. But when sound was finally married to film, the commotion it made was too loud to ignore. You ain't heard nothing yet. Film critic and historian Mark Cousins writes in his book The Story of Film, cinema started to sing in the years 1928 to 1945. Five times as many people flocked to the movies each week as do now. They became an international obsession. None of the large studios wanted this new technology. Tickets were selling, audiences were happy. Why fix what wasn't broken? However, Warner Brothers saw the coming of sound as a means to become competitive with the big four studios in Hollywood. When they premiered The Jazz Singer, they accelerated themselves into being a fifth major player. The other studios were now forced to sit up and pay attention. Hello. This is a demonstration of a talking picture. Many silent filmmakers, such as Chaplin, thought that the onset of sound destroyed the mystique of film and delayed using it for as long as possible. The tramp can't talk. The minute he talks, he's dead. The language of silent film reached its peak just as it ended. Charlie Chaplin said it best when he said, just when we got it right, it was over. Actors who had honed their craft and even become stars were suddenly disposable. Two of silent cinema's greatest were forced into career changes neither wanted to make. Actors were not the only artists impacted. Directors could no longer talk their actors through a scene. In his book, Who the Devil Made It, Bogdanovich adds, with the advent of sound, studios actually turned against the top silent picture makers. Most of them, to remain employed, had to fight hard to prove themselves all over again. Associate directors who had theater training were assigned to veterans like Dwan, Ford, or Hawks. All of these survived to tell the tale, but many, like D.W. Griffith, never recovered. Studio heads did everything they could to help their new star sparkle. Dialogue coaches were hired. Vocal attack, vocal color, and their fundamental and supreme value in the art of acting. Dance and acting lessons were provided. Notable Broadway playwrights such as F. Scott Fitzgerald, Clifford Odets, and William Faulkner were hired to write complex, emotion-filled screenplays. Perhaps the most unforeseen change the coming of sound brought to cinema was the emergence of new genres. The first genre of the sound era was the musical. In film art, Bordwell and Thompson write, the musical came into being in response to a technical innovation. The notion of basing a film on a series of musical numbers did not emerge until the late 1920s with the successful introduction of recorded soundtracks. That innovation, Mark Cousins tells us, caused other genres and branches of filmmaking to blossom. Gangster pictures, westerns, screwball comedies, horror films, war films, animations, and serious dramas. No longer mute, but wondrous still, cinema not only found its voice, but the means to speak to all the world over. Hey!